Jesuitism by J.A. Wiley. We are now chapter 19, and this is the fourth part of our reading for today. Our Father in heaven, have mercy to all of us sinners in need of your spirit and of your grace. Our oh, Father, do not forsake us in this end of times. Feel us with your holy life and your Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of your Son, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Page 110 of this book, J.E. Wiley wrote, There never was contrived and set a going in a more, a more powerful and complete instrumentality for enslaving a people than this. No noise accompanies the working of its mechanism. The world neither hears it, near neither hears nor sees it. Nevertheless, day by day and year by year, it pursues its work with noiseless, pauseless diligence. And that work is to, to build up the temporal sovereignty of the Pope in Ireland, to establish canon law in the room of British law, and to bind down the people in slavery by the most effectual of all methods, even that of enslaving the conscience. The man who was for who was the first to bring fully to light this conspiracy against the nation and liberties of Protestant Britain was the late Reverend Robert J. McGee. McGee. His startling discovery of the secret diocesan statutes of the Romish province of Leinster laid bare the, the treason of the priesthood. These statutes with the whole documents bearing on the case, Mr. McGee deposited in the University Library, Cambridge, the Bodleian Library, Oxford, and the Library of Trinity College, Dublin in 1840. Upon the requisition of the Lord Lieutenant, nobleman, and gentleman of the country of Huntingdon, Huntingdon, Diggy's documents were carefully examined and verified in Mr. McGee's printed report on them, ratified by the Vice-Chancellor of Cambridge and subsequently by eminent authorities in Oxford and Trinity College, Dublin. Dublin. The report thus verified and attested was a compendium of the documents lodged, showing the papal law surreptitiously set up for the government of the Irish people and the machinery by which the Pope contrives to make himself the real, real ruler of England, Ireland. To no one are these documents better known than to our present premier. The humble rector now rests his honored head in his quiet grave, while around that of the powerful minister rages the ultramontani tempest which Mr. McGee foretold would one day most surely come. We have seen the machinery constructed for the indoctrination of priests and people in Ireland, but a yet more important question remains. What was the subject matter of that indoctrina indoctrination? The subject matter of indoctrination was the whole body of Roman law, which has been published by the hierarchy and put in force in Ireland for the government of its people. These include some of the most tyrannical canons in the statute book of Rome, and among others, some which she dare not publish and put in force in some popish countries because their governments have forbidden them on the ground that they would subvert the authority of the sovereign and destroy the liberties of the people. In short, upset everything in the kingdom. But the greater tolerance of the British government has suffered to be published while other governments have placed under ban. And the consequence is that Ireland is more rigorously ruled by papal law than most popish countries on the continent. It is this whole body of law, including the very worst of Rome's statutes, which is being graven as with a pen of iron, first on the conscious, consciences of the priesthood by means of their daily readings and annual conferences and examination, the rest in the consciences of the people by the regular catechizing and indoctrinations to which they are subjected by the priest in the, in the confessional. Shall we, shall we saw the wind or permit... It to be sown and trust not to reap the whirlwind. We'll continue the next paragraph on page 
111. The next time, may God our Father, we do bless you in his only begotten divine Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious.